Just believe in yourself. You can do anything you set your mind to. Everything you need is already in you. Or maybe you've been hit with the famous Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Hey, my friend, welcome back to another edition of the Building Faith Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Reese, and it is my mission, as always, to provide you with biblical solutions to life's tough challenges. There's no shortage of pithy statements designed to encourage you to let your inner confidence roar. There's only one problem. They don't work. Look, not because they're not true, well, some of them aren't, but it's mostly because they don't address the core of the issue. If confidence were simply a matter of changing the words that you speak, we wouldn't have a worldwide epidemic of insecurity and low self-esteem. Without the right confidence, your purpose can go unfilled and you can live way below your potential. So today I want to talk to you about the six steps to building a biblical confidence that can conquer anything. But first, I want you to ask yourself two important questions. Question number one, what do I want confidence in? Is it in your ability to perform a certain task? For example, to sing, to talk to strangers, maybe to be able to build a cabinet? I don't know. You see, oftentimes the areas that we think we need confidence, we really don't because what we really need is skill. And that's good news because all skills are learnable. And question number two, What do I want to do with this confidence? What is the purpose of your confidence? Do you just want it so you can feel good? Do you have a goal that has been sitting on the shelf because you're waiting for the confidence to step out? In this case, it's actually not confidence that you need. It's more discipline that you're looking for. You see, Moses didn't feel good about his ability to do what God called him to do, but he moved forward anyway. Because here's the thing, there are a few problems that you're going to encounter when it comes to confidence. Number one, confidence is not something that will just come upon you. So if you're waiting to feel confident before you do something, you're likely going to be waiting for a really long time. And in that case, it's an excuse for inaction. Number two, self-confidence at its core is consumed with who I am, how I feel. It's very me-centered, and unfortunately, that's what's preached, not only in society, I got to get mine, but also a huge part of the messages that are being preached in our churches today. God wants to give you. God wants to bless you. God has something amazing for you. And while all these statements are true, unfortunately, the church has made the focus all about you. My friend, this isn't about you. This isn't about me. The center of the universe is God, not you or me. So when we are taught to constantly be inward focused, we literally detach ourselves from God, the source of our confidence. And then we wonder why we're floundering in our self-esteem. My friend, you will have confidence in you when you have confidence in your creator. So let's talk today about the six steps that you need to build confidence that can conquer anything. Step number one, stop comparing. 2 Corinthians 10, 12 tells us that comparing ourselves to others is ignorant. When you compare your accomplishment with someone else's, you're only seeing the surface of their lives, not the full reality. And even if they are truly prospering, it's irrelevant as your purpose and your life are unique to you. And look, there's nothing wrong with letting others motivate you. At one time, the four minute mile seemed absolutely impossible, but once Roger Bannister achieved it in 1954, many more followed after that. But I want you to keep your focus on your purpose in this life because you can't run someone else's race. Step number two, raise your standard. Insecure people tend to flock together. And if you want to raise your confidence level, you will need to raise the standard of people you surround yourself with. And I'm not suggesting that you ditch all of your friends, but I am saying that it is time that you begin to spend a good amount of time surrounded by people who are doing more than you, accomplishing more than you, and who are much more confident than you. And I get it. You're probably going to be like, well, wait a minute. I'm going to feel even more or even less confident hanging around those kind of people. But Proverbs 13, 20 tells us that whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. 
If you always have to be the smartest, the prettiest, the wisest, the most accomplished person in your crowd, my friend, you will never advance yourself or God's kingdom because your confidence will be grounded in the insufficiency of others instead of the all sufficiency of Christ. Number three, develop self-discipline. First Corinthians 9, 24 through 27 reads, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for e an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. My friend, your self-confidence is directly proportionate to your level of self-discipline. And if you struggle with self-discipline, you likely also struggle with self-confidence. Every time you fail to listen and take action to what you know that you should do, you lose confidence in yourself and in your abilities. And this lack of confidence continues to spiral downward as you flounder to try to control yourself. My friend, be fully committed to doing whatever you can to build your success every single day and to accept full responsibility for your life. If it's uncomfortable, you're probably on the right track. Don't hesitate to ask for help if you're struggling with procrastination or low motivation. But at the end of the day, remember, your other people's job is not to prop you up and motivate you all the time. There has to be a level of self-discipline if you want self-confidence. Number four, shift your source. Now, if you're trying to obtain confidence outside of God, <laughs> well, I wish you the best, my friend, because even if you do, it's going to be on very shaky ground. Proverbs 3.26 reminds us, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. If you keep looking to yourself as the source of your confidence, you are either going to slip into narcissism or depression. And look, I'm being a little extreme, of course, but the world tells us that we have to have confidence to accomplish things in life. I disagree. Some of the most successful projects that I've ever done were the ones that I had very little confidence in my own abilities. But instead of declining to move forward and sitting on my sofa waiting for confidence to come in from the next Amazon delivery, I prayed and I asked God to be with me in moving forward. You see, my confidence was in him, not in me. I have confidence because of him. I have confidence to do what he's calling me to do because I know that it's his spirit within me. I have confidence to override my feelings and trust in my knowings. And may I suggest that you stop asking God to improve your confidence on your terms and accept his terms and your confidence will begin to skyrocket. And even if it doesn't, you're going to move forward anyway, right? Step number five, renew your mind. Are your inner words telling you that you just don't have what it takes? Well, my friend, if you continue to listen to the pain of your past and the lies of the enemy, you will end up powerless and purposeless. And if you want true biblical confidence, that kind of confidence that steps out boldly in all situations, that kind of confidence that speaks the truth, that kind of confidence that answers the call of God, no matter how intimidating, then my friend, you must renew your old thoughts to his truth. God's word should be your benchmark for the thoughts that you think. And if your inner words don't line up with God's word, then you need to challenge and change your words. Do as 2 Corinthians 10.5 tells you, destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God and we capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Otherwise, my friend, those thoughts will have free reign in your life. Give those negative, fearful thoughts free reign and they will rule your life and ruin your confidence. And if you need help in learning how to lasso the lies that are bouncing around in your head, go ahead and check out my online course called Renew Your Mind. I will go ahead and include a link in the description section below. And number six, embrace your God-given identity. My friend, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't believe me? Go check out Psalm 139, 14. It says, for you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it full well. You see, you were made with intentionality. Every part of your temperament and your talents were uniquely designed by God himself. And if you want to develop confidence, my friend, grow in the confidence of who he created you to be. If you want to know more about your unique temperament, I want to invite you to grab a copy of my free What's My Temperament Guide to get you started. I'll include it in a link in the description section below. So which step will you be taking first to start walking in confidence? Let me know in the comments below. Do you want to learn how to embrace your God-given identity? Go ahead and check out this episode right here. And to keep us humble, let us remember the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God.